The summit for a new global financing pact started in France at the Place Brognard in Paris. In Argentina, various social sectors ratified their support to the people of Fujui after the repression against the protesters that reject the constitutional reform imposed by the governor of that province, Gerardo Morales. And three Palestinians were killed in an Israeli airstrike on their car north of the northern West Bank city of Jenin. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. The summit for a new global financial pact began in France on Thursday at the Palais Brognard in Paris. The two-day event is hosting more than 300 high-level participants, heads of state and government, international organizations and representatives of civil society and the private sector. Delivering a speech during the opening session, the French President Emmanuel Macron stated the aim of the summit is to lay the groundwork for a renewed financial system suited to the common challenges of the 21st century, such as fighting inequalities and climate change and protecting biodiversity. For her part, the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, addressed the participants in the Summit for a New Global Financial Pact taking place in Paris, where she explained why her country was attending such event. Today, with a heavy heart, but with hope, we come to Paris today not to reinforce the divisions of the past, the orders of the past, but we come to Paris to identify the common humanity that we share and the absolute moral imperative to save our planet and to make it livable. During his speech at the financing summit, Colombian President Gustavo Petro stressed the need to take away concrete actions from an event such as this. I would propose that from this meeting a group of experts and economics who have worked with the global financial system in the face of the Dubai Cup should come up with a report on the reform of the global financial system to finance climate actions on a large scale. This could be a concrete idea that could come out of this meeting. During his speech at the summit, President Pedro also stated that the dominant paradigm based on the extinction of the last 40 years is over. It is no fighting against capital, and I will end here, but it is a new paradigm. For 40 years, all countries have been under the same religious belief. The market leads us to the general human well-being. No, it leads us to extinctions. The dominant paradigm of the extinction of the last four years is over. The Colombian president, Gustavo Petro, emphasized at the summit on a new global financial pact in Paris that one of the main objectives of the summit is to recover the power of the state to tackle the climate crisis. Now it is a mark of recovering the power of the state of human planning on a multilateral global scale so that without going into the decreeing the end of the market, maximizing it to its limit in action against the climate crisis. We can now make a large public investment by releasing debt in such as a way that this new space, which I call the plan march against the climate crisis, can take place and then we can make the numbers work. On Thursday, the Cuban president, Miguel Diaz-Canel, took to Twitter to announce he participates in the summit of a new global financial pact in Paris with the commitment and responsibility to give voice to the positions of the G77 plus China on the thematic axis to be addressed and especially the historical claims of the nations of the South. The Cuban leader pointed out that the fulfillment of the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030 and the Addis Ababa Action Agenda must be accompanied by a profound 
profound rethinking of the current economic, financial and trade order, in which new bases of justice, equity and solidarity are established with a new relationship between the North and the South. The G77 plus China is the broadest and most diverse consultation group in the multilateral sphere with 134 member states. In France, hundreds of people demonstrated in Nantes City against the government's decision to close a coalition of environmental organizations. A massive crowd gathered on Wednesday in front of Nantes City Hall against the closure of the climate NGO Earth Uprisings. Olivier Varane, the government spokesperson, accused the movement of encouraging violence during the March protests against the controversial project to build a giant irrigation reservoir next to Zenit Solin village. The demonstrators claimed that closing the NGO is a political decision and responds to agro-industry's interests. The government has been on one side for a long time, and that's just proof of its inaction with regard to everything that's going on. It's not hidden. It's an admission that nothing will happen and that there is nothing to expect. And that's why we need to be even more present to exist and to keep this movement alive, all of us together, because it won't come from anywhere else. Following the example of the pension reform that we saw, the government is trying to dissolve all ideological, ecological, and social opposition to it. In other words, as soon as there are people who oppose head-on ecocidal projects, useless projects, and the social justice and social progression, the government chose its authoritarianism. Let's take a short break. But remember, you can join us on TikTok at Tell Us With English, where you will find the news in different formats, news updates, and more. Other stories coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. In Argentina, various social sectors ratified their support to the people of Jujuy after the repression against the protests that reject the constitutional reform imposed by the governor of the province, Gerardo Morales. President Alberto Fernandez condemned the state of violence in Jujuy and instructed the Ministry of Justice to analyze and promote actions of unconstitutionality of articles of the reform, while the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights expressed his concern for the situation that the province of the province of Fujui is going through and warned Morales to avoid an escalation of violence. For this Thursday, the mothers of Plaza de Mayo will dedicate the march to the people of Fujui, while the Union Tramway Union called a national strike for 48 hours. This Wednesday, Honduras government announced that its military police will take control of all 21 penitentiaries in the country. After the tragedy in a prison in Francisco Morazan department where 46 female inmates died. The public order military police assumed as of July 1st of this year the coordination, direction and control of all 21st penal centers of the country for a period of one year time in which it must recruit, train, and educate at least 2,000 new penitentiary center guards. In addition, Honduras Presidential Press Secretary Ives José Alvarado reported three days of national mourning and announced some measures taken to protect female inmates at the National Penitentiary Institute in response to the high rates of prison violence. The judiciary is requested pursuant to legal procedures to grant alternative measures of preventive detention to all women in the National Penitentiary Institute who are not convicted as well as to those who suffer from terminal illnesses and to preserve the detention of those considered highly dangerous. 
We move on to other topics. In the United States, Hollywood writers and screenwriters rallied in Los Angeles on Wednesday, demanding a new labor agreement that includes pay guarantees and job security plans. The new demonstration comes 50 days after the beginning of the strike. The protesters demanded to be kept on the payroll beyond casual jobs and to receive higher payments. They denounced that although the demand and profits of the contractors have increased in recent years, the fees and guarantees of those those working on the scripts have been constantly reduced. Meanwhile, negotiations with the production companies have not yet resumed and have been stalled since May the 1st. A similar deadline now looms for the actors, whose contract expires on June the 30th. The Actors' Union voted overwhelmingly in favor of authorizing its leaders to call a strike if no agreement is reached. Marching in support of the WTA, along with many fellow actors and other union members from other unions who are supporting us as well. Because writing is uh, especially becoming more of a gig economy job. You don't know how long you're going to work. You don't know when you're going to work next. It is impossible to kind of build a life and a future in one of the most expensive cities in the world. And considering there would be no TV, be no movies without writers, we deserve a cut of that profit. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was received by the President of the United States, Joe Biden, on Wednesday evening. Modi will hold official talks with Biden this Thursday at the Oval Office and then hold a press conference, participate in a joint meeting of Congress and finally be honored with a state dinner at the White House. Washington seeks to strengthen relations with a potential regional ally to counteract the growing international presence of China and Russia. India, on the other hand, despite the sanctions promoted by the United States due to the Ukrainian crisis, is one of the countries that has increased its purchases of Russian crude oil the bust. And the search for a submersible lost in the Atlantic last Sunday was expanded on Thursday with the addition of a French ship which deployed a remotely operated vehicle to scan the seabed. The U.S. Coast Guard Northeast District tweeted that Le Talent had arrived in the area and had just deployed its scanning device, with which they hoped to find the five people on board alive. However, as the search area expands, fears are growing that oxygen is already depleted on this ship, which set out on an expedition to the wreckage of the Titanic landliner, approximately 1,450 kilometers east of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Titan is believed to have carried out enough oxygen for 96 hours, which means it could run out this very day. OceanGate, the company that manages Titan, is also facing numerous objections for alleged safety lapses. Now we address other topics. A powerful tornado struck a city in northern Texas on Thursday, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake, with at least three dead and more than 100 injured. Millions of residents in multiple Texas states were under severe weather warnings for the advance of dangerous storms that, fueled by the region's high temperatures, formed tornadoes, thunderstorms, and hail. The phenomenon caused power outages in rolling plains, including more than 700 people without power in the town area and significant damage to the town of Matador, a town of about 570,000 people in Mali County. The state governor, Greg Abbott, announced the deployment of resources to respond to the emergency and provide the necessary support and assistance to protect Texans and help those affected by the tornadoes. On Thursday in Thailand, thousands of dead fish, crabs and shrimp, victims of red tie, they washed out on Thong Hua Lane Beach in southern Chung Phuong province. The local fisheries authority, Bung Yawat Thong Thom, reported that red tide is a toxic algal bloom that depletes oxygen in the water and prevents the fish from breathing through their gills. Local residents have been collecting dead fish along the two kilometers of wide sandy beach, even though authorities advise against consuming the fish. Because 
because the algae can be toxic. The Fisheries Authority clarified that this fish should only be used as fertilizer. It is estimated that the red tides cause economic losses of $77 million each year due to the beach and fish enclosures, with a consequent decrease in tourism and the seafood revenues. Telesur English launches its own videos on demand site for you to go and revisit our interviews, the top stories, the special broadcastings and more. Just go to the top left corner in our website homepage and click in the video option to access our VOD platform where you can even revisit this news brief. And now we will have a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. In the United Kingdom, on Thursday, Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shimigal acknowledged the Ukrainian counteroffensive will take time and admitted that his nation is waiting for help from its Western allies. I think that during this summit in Vilnius, uh, allies uh, will be very concrete in, uh, in conditions, in dates, in their messages. And uh, we are waiting this, we are working for this. I should note that Ukrainian army now is NATO army. We are fighting by NATO weaponry, uh, with NATO weaponry. We are fighting according to NATO standards. Uh, our army. The government of Russia said on Thursday that Ukrainian forces in eastern and southern Ukraine were temporarily limiting their activities after Kiev launched its highly anticipated counteroffensive. During a meeting housed by the President Vladimir Putin, the Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu said that Western military aid for Ukraine was not seriously impacting outcomes on the battlefield, even though the Kremlin routinely says the deliveries prolong the conflict and escalate the fighting. Russia has argued several times with the last week that the Ukrainian counteroffensive is a failure. Russia forces don't see a threat there, especially since they are actively forming reserves, Shoigu said. Assume that the offensive potential of the enemy is not salty. The series of strategy reserves are no employee. And I ask that is taken into account when planning combat work it must be based on reality. A deadly Israeli drone attack hit a vehicle in the northern West Bank in a new escalation of attacks on the occupied Palestinian territory. Palestinian security sources and the eyewitnesses said an Israeli army reconnaissance drone struck near Al Jalama, a village north of Jenin, killing all three Palestinians in the car. The three young men were identified as Mohammed Bashar Weiss, Suhiab Adnan Al Ghul, and Israf Murad Zari. Meanwhile, the civil defense of the Palestinian Authority said in a statement that its crews arrived at the scene, put out the flames of fire and found the bodies of the three young men. Likewise, it also said that the Israeli Defense Forces prevented the civil defense crew from taking the bodies and also prevented the ambulances of the Palestinian Red Crescent Society from taking the bodies from the burnt car. And the Israeli army demolished a Palestinian house in the occupied West Bank in the city of Nablus early Thursday morning. The one demolished on Thursday is the second house in two days in the area under the pretext of persuading the Palestinian population not to commit acts against Israeli occupation. Tensions are rising between Israelis and Palestinians after hundreds of Israeli settlers burst into a Palestinian town in the occupied West Bank on Wednesday, setting fire to dozens of cars and homes. Settled Violence against Palestinians and their properties in the West Bank is routine, yet rarely prosecuted by Israeli authorities. 
Hartum and other Sudanese cities were the scene of heavy fighting, including gun battles and air artillery attacks between the army and paramilitary rapid support forces following the end of a 72-hour truce on Wednesday. Residents in Khartoum reported an upsurge in clashes, as well as army fire raids on paramilitary positions in the south and west of the capital. Meanwhile, local reports indicate that the Wadi Zidna air base, controlled by the army, was the target of intense artillery bombardment, while violent clashes were taking place in the neighborhoods of Feriyacht and al Mohandezin in the capital. The conflict in Sudan has caused the internal and external displacement of more than 2 million people, according to the United United Nations agencies, a figure that adds to the 3.7 million internally displaced people already in the country. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm your anchor Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.